Welcome to the Astrologer Report for the week of April the 22nd through to the 29th. This week brings us Mercury in direct motion on Thursday the 25th after a long stay retrograde that began on April Fool's Day. Not to mention, guys, he's been in the sign of Aries since May, March the 10th, and he finally exits Aries on May the 15th. This is a very important story because Mercury this week is in his elemental fire year, finishing up his tour of duty in the sign of war. And maybe we can expect as Mercury leaves here, the war stories and war news stories to tone down a bit. And so we're looking hopefully for something like that by mid-May. But in our own lives, Mercury Direct offers up a point in which we can move forward on revisions, redactions, things we've been reconsidering and changing our mind about over the weeks of April 1st to the 25th. We're going to talk about how this plays out for your sun, moon, and rising. But also, by the way, there's a Neptune Neptune Mars conjunction on the weekend. We'll touch on that as well. A Neptune Mars conjunction is very cool. So we'll talk about where the fog can lift and some confusion in your life. So by the way, if you're new to my channel, welcome and all my regulars, welcome back. My name is Lori Lothian. I'm using the Western Tropical Zodiac and the whole sign house system. I love the fixed stars and the minor asteroids. And I put a lot of that content in my 20 to 30 videos per month here on YouTube. Give me a try, hit the like button, subscribe and see what you think. Um, the only promotion I have running now is if you want to win a free reading with me, which is like, by the way, you can't even get a reading with me on book, but I'm giving away a couple of free readings, um, access to free access to some of my classes, uh, replays as well, and uh, giveaways on my 2024 All Signs Bundle valued at $77 for um, like 12, uh, almost 15 hours of video content that is coming away as a giveaway as well. So come on, join the giveaway prizes. And how do you enter the contest? because I'm celebrating hitting 60,000 subscribers, you enter the contest by simply subscribing to my email newsletter, Cosmic Moonshine. It's in the description box below. And once you're subscribed, you'll learn about all the details of how to be in the contest. Now, also, I have an El Camino opening. I'm taking a trip on the coastal Portugal route, it, Portugal route easy, flat. Um, our bags are being taken to the hotel for us. Uh, a couple of people, a couple indeed had to drop out. So we have two openings and I think one of them might be gone, but I'm not sure. But if you're interested, please get in touch with me. Use my website. I'll go to my website description box below and my email a contact address is there. All right. So uh, that, that trip will be the uh, last May the 29th through to June the 11th. All right, so let's get talking about the sky as a general principle before I open up the chart and we do the all signs. Number one, do I usually open up the chart? Yeah, I do. Number one, because Mercury is in what we call the elemental fire year, that's Gary Caton's term for it, uh, an expert astrologer on all things Mercury. And I will put a link below to his video with me interview in December about this upcoming fire year. Mercury is spending about six months in the fire signs of Aries, Leo, and Sag in a way he has not done since 2017. So a lot of what Mercury, the messenger, the ideator, the mind changer, the ideal, the, the messenger of the your god of the gods is doing is something that he's done back for you and me and the world in 2017. Now, with this energy here in fire, right, it's your fire signs in your in your natal whole sign house system, Leo, Sag, and Aries that get lit up in a new way. And major changes can happen with Mercury's support here. But this year is even more important because as you all know, Aries is where we had the total solar eclipse. It is a big part of our sky that April 8th eclipse, and that's where Mercury is going back and forth and chatting with Chiron, the wounded healer. So Mercury's been very busy here in this part of our sky with a three-past story with Chiron. What part of your life has been kind of effed up, You're kind of experiencing a wound in the Aries part of your story since Chiron entered there in 2019 with Mercury back and forth over Chiron with the eclipse, total solar eclipse conjunct Chiron, then Mars, Mercury going through here, right? For two months, we got a lot going on. I'm going to suggest that as Mercury moves forward, this week on Thursday, the 25th, we're going to see the resolution and the outpicturing of difficulties we've all experienced since 2019 with Chiron here coming to a close and clarity descending upon us about our next move. And that's how we'll approach the all signs. 
There is a Sabian symbol at the degree in which Mercury is going to go direct. He's going to go to direct at 15 degrees of the sign of Aries, and that rounds up to 16 degrees in the Sabian symbols. And in Elsie Wheeler's book, A Screen of Prophecy, the Sabian symbols, not Elsie Wheeler, Diana E. Roche, she has the Sabian written down, which you can't change. That's one of 360 degree channel symbols by Elsie Wheeler. The symbol is brownies dancing in the setting sun, brownies dancing in the setting sun, keyword invigoration. And the theme here is the dance of life. The symbol speaks to getting back to the unrefined and natural source of things for clarification, understanding, and self-renewal. Well, if you can't call clarification, self-understanding, and self-renewal, good old Mercury terms, nothing is. It's an eagerness to move on to the next cycle. It alludes to transitions or the point where the old gives way to the new and the end and the beginning are one. Because it's the sun is setting, right? It's the end of a day. We're going to transition from one state day to the evening, but the brownies are dancing in that setting sun. And brownies are fairies if you don't know what they are. And some key words are animation, vitality, and strength, energy, activity, life force, happiness, celebration, renewal, and rejuvenation, the end and the beginning in one, a portal, a portal of solar mysteries. So I like it. I'm feeling ready for some changes in my airy sky that are going to be taking me out of what has been maybe a bit of a difficulty since 2019. Now with that Neptune, excuse me while I have a sip of tea, with the Neptune story, Neptune can be with a spiritual warrior, a dreamy magical enchantment, stillness, a stillness and, you know, almost like a, I'm taking action within stillness. And Ren Butler likes to talk about that. That's on the weekend, Saturday and Sunday. And Mars is coming into contact with Neptune in Pisces into a conjunction form, which he does every two years since 2012, 11, 12, um, when Neptune entered Pisces. And Ren Butler, in his amazing book, The Archetypal Universe, does speak to this as creative and spiritual vitality, magnetic warmth, gentle and sensitive strengths, gifts of compassionate action. We could use some compassionate action in the world, honestly. The, this world has a kindness deficit. I had a dream, and I was told in the dream, we have a kindness deficit. Think about that. And... Strange feelings on the dark side, the shadow, you can feel futile, pointless, toxic, blah, that kind of thing. Camouflage desires or secret harmful actions. Here's a great little quote, guys. You must learn to be still in the midst of activity and to be vibrantly alive in repose. You must learn to be still in the midst of activity and to be vibrant, vibrantly alive in, in a repose. But that's a Gandhi quote, who was born with a, a Mars sextile, Neptune. Now, this is going to be a short video. My weeklies are no longer than one hour. So we're going to pop right into the sky, take a look at it together, and begin to talk about it from your perspective. So let's do that. And if I'm talking a little fast, it's because I'm getting ready to pack up for a trip to Mexico. I'm recording this for my Patreon community on Sunday, April 21st. So I'm going to receive it a day before you. And I'm going to drive my daughter to an exam. <laughs> and I was like, because your campus is two hours out of town. Well, 40 minutes by car, two hours by bus already. Here we go. It's cute for uh, Gemini just to show you the sky, not to worry. There is 15 degrees Mercury into uh, direct motion. And there is Mars. And I don't know why Neptune's not in the sky. That's kind of weird. Let's put Neptune back in. Poor Neptune. I didn't mean to leave him out. That is really strange, right? Okay. So and there's Neptune and Mars, which will co-join on the uh, end of the weekend. Like you'll feel it Friday, Saturday into Sunday, just so you know. And so what I would show you here is that Mercury will co-join with the wounded healer, which was in the middle of that eclipse. And you might want to pay attention to that. It's the last of three passes over some fundamental chironic wound. And while that is not happening this week, it will happen down the pipeline here on May the 7th. And we'll be addressing that next week. But as we go back for this week, we want to see that this is that conjunction at 28 degrees of Pisces happening here on Sunday in Vancouver, Canada, but it will also be in orb of influence on Friday, Saturday, 
and Sunday, even Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, you're feeling this Mars conjunction. And I would say that this Mars conjunction to Neptune can indicate some kind of ability to clear the fog in some area of confusion, because I think Mars is the windshield wipers or the defogger on the foggy confusion that Neptune usually uh, engenders in the sky. Or a sense of inaction or uh, what do you call it? Like fight, flight, and freeze, a freezing kind of response to life, a kind of inertia. All right. So a couple of thoughts. Remember that you're all lined up to get a lot of energy this year from Mercury in August, September in Leo, and then November, uh, November, December in Sagittarius, a couple months each time. And here it is, this April one. This started, come on, guys. I mean, did I say March the 10th to May the 15th? You've had Mercury in that part of the sky where the wounded healer is since 2019. That's Chiron, the wounded healer. And as on top of that wound, you've had an eclipse blast it wide open, but also eclipse it. You know, an eclipse is eclipsing something. I mean, so the sun was eclipsed by the moon, but Chiron was eclipsed by the eclipse. So we've eclipsed the wound. We've ended the wound. We're end end ending a longer story of difficulty. Let's go through each sign. And we're going to start with the Aries. Let's just put the sky there. It's good enough. Ah, oh, let's go here. The 25th, Mercury is direct. And let's go by hours. And let's take it back to Aries. All right, here we are. Aries, sun, moon, and rising sign. You'll notice here that you have been having a chironic wound, maybe since Chiron's entry into the house of your identity. Your sun is your career and purpose. Your moon is your body and safety. But the rising sign is all about you. And in this regard, you may have felt out of your skin, like you don't belong to yourself, like something's wrong with you, maybe just feeling like you you don't even belong in reality in some way you've been outside the out like the outsider the outcast now i have an aries sun and moon and i did feel very much like an outcast <laughs> uh, in the pandemic right 2020 21 22 Chiron entered here in 2019 because of course i wasn't taking the unsafe and ineffective uh, protocols for health and so I was banned from many places. So in a way, you know, this sense of being the outside of the outcast, which Chiron was, is something that is coming to a complete close. You no longer feel like you are the outside looking in guy. Um, and in this regard, you might find yourself kind of activated in a very exciting way as on the on this direct motion Thursday, and into the next two weeks till May 15th, you suddenly are, I've got ideas, I've got things to say, I've got direct communications with what I need and want, and I'm no longer feeling this kind of conflict of self. And it can help you move forward. And because at the time this is occurring, Venus is here and she is a benefic. And she's the girl who says, I got it all. Um she's kind of giving you a blessing and yes she's in her detriment but come on he's going direct with venus co-present so it's really about liking yourself but also feeling like you've got what you need in order to be lucky and successful and i do think that this outcast energy can't be underestimated uh, for however it happened for you as an aries sun moon and rising because it is blasting out it is completing so an outcast from your your moon perspective from your home you know, your home, you didn't feel like you belonged in your home or your son, your career and your purpose. For me, it was my home. I'm in my home country of Canada, which became Gestapo dictatorial around the pandemic and uh, banned me from everywhere, you know, everything, gyms, restaurants, coffee shops, museums, planes, trains, and automobiles. Yeah. Talking about being the outcast. And I couldn't see my friends. I couldn't do anything. I don't know. What, how do you guys feel like you kind of didn't belong in 2019 onward? And how it, you what you look forward to a turning point here this week. And just knowing that you're also clearing some fog in the back end here to do with addictions, self-undoing, and bad habits. This coming weekend, Friday through Sunday, allows you to really open up a new kind of uh, clarity and and progress and actions and decisions around those kinds of uh, confusing areas of where you may have undone your own self by, you know, falling into patterns of difficult 
self-sabotage. Taurus, this is a story here where you have a very interesting place of woundedness since 2019. Chiron in the 12th house is very subtle. It may have been an addiction, uh, you know, a vape, a cigarette, uh, you know, a wine, alcohol, some kind of feeling out of, out of sorts here where you feel challenged with your own sabotaging strategies. Maybe since 2019, you felt like you also were uh, up against hidden enemies all the time, people you thought had your back and they showed up as an asshole. My poor Taurus son daughter had two roommates from hell in university at this time who stabbed her in the back kind of thing. And so backstabbers wounding you as well from 2019 onward in the house of hidden enemies, the 12th house. So you've been blindsided there. Now there is soul work here. Spiritual enlightenment can happen and maybe your spiritual path has been really questionable and wounded since 2019. Now, Mercury being here in this part of the sky, as I mentioned earlier, since uh, March and then retrograde April 1st to the 25th, these are areas where you've been in reconsideration mode, and now you're about to move forward on the 25th Thursday ad through to the 15th of May. And this is where the end of this wound, thank you, Eclipse, thank you, Chiron, is coming into new decisions and new actions and new directions for you. With that conjunction of Mars and Neptune on the weekend, Friday through Sunday, there's a sense here of clearing some kind of confusion or uncertainty or fog or a delusion. When it comes to some of your friends, some of those people that you thought, you know, maybe, you know, rose colored glasses about your social groups or your friendships. And some of this is now being really clarified for you as Mars moves through the fog and clears the fog of Neptune. You may also be clearing the fog of some uh, career goals or long-term plans and dreams for your life, and now you're really able to see more clearly what it is you indeed want. Let's face it, you've got Pluto for the next two decades in your 10th house of career. There's going to be a lot of change and transformation up there, but also power and wealth. Good luck, Taurus, with all of that. Hey, and you're, you're lucky as all hell in the last year. Jupiter supporting you as he moved through last May to the, this end of May in the house of you. And look how exciting that is at, as well. So when you clear through something here, if you have a, a bad habit, a hidden enemy, an addiction, anything like that, you're, you're going to do very well uh, after this um, turnaround story. Turnaround story. I'm going to call this video a turnaround story of Mercury going direct. All righty. Let's talk about you, Geminis. Uh, I have a progressed Gemini sun, so I have some skin in the game here. What's going on here is you're experiencing this Mercury uh, chironic wound turnaround story. Mercury in the 11th house is going to say with the chironic wound, what are you healing in terms of chironic wounds with groups of belonging, larger friendship circles and networks, or regarding the means in which you acquire ga gains from your career? Like, if there's a wound here, you can still be acquiring career gains, but you feel somehow wounded about it. And why is that? Now, this is your money that you acquire or your earnings or your direct uh, reputation stuff, you know, from the career that you're engaged in. Or a failure to realize some some of your w wishes for your life and feeling wounded that your wishes have been la lacking launch power. And that's been true since 2019. Now, Chiron was not leaving here, by the way, till 2027, but this is a turning point in the healing of this wound. Chiron engages here, you know, on May 7th with that Mercury. And there's a real significant turning around of a wounded situation with a friend or an ally or a benefactor or with an elder sibling, especially the one just above you. Um, my wound with friends is I, uh, three friends died in the last, since 2019. They're my age guys. And, you know, two heart attacks and one was in a car accident. So yes, I've been wounded in the house of friendships with my progressed son in Gemini. So where this wound of friendship and friend belongings and allies and benefactors is, is now turning around. And you might notice a difference in the energy of that starting on Thursday, as you now have revised, revisioned, and now you're having a turnaround story and you're moving forward in the areas of the 11th house meanings that I just told you. Now, let me also mention that you have that Mars conjunction with Neptune coming up Friday through Sunday, and that is really clearing some foggy confusion or uncertainty or 
uh, you know, stasis going on in your career and reputation space is now you're going to go through that energy next weekend and know exactly what decisions and actions you need to take to capitalize on that gorgeous Saturn at the top of the sky, making you an expert authority master and the guy at the top of the wisdom hill. So you know, you're going to make some executive decisions about your career and know how to move forward as we see this Friday through Saturday, Sunday energy come through your sky. Now, Cancer, Sun, Moon, and Rising. This is a story where you experience the energy of Mercury in a turnaround at the top of your sky. How have you been feeling like your career path has been on purpose or off purpose? Chiron, the key to purpose. Since 2019, you've been working to find the deeply meaningful spiritually aptitude, spiritual aptitude, like where your natural gifts and talents, your original medicine be given to this world in your career, yet you may have had career and reputation wounds. Everything from being slandered or having embarrassing things happen to you to do with your public reputation, anything to do with your career, maybe just not working the way you wanted or things going sideways there in the career reputation corridor of your reality or just really pining to be on purpose and not feeling it. And here we have this Mercury as he goes direct on Thursday, the 25th, completing what he started, not just in the retrograde of April 1st, but when he entered here March the 10th. This is the movement forward on the Thursday, the 25th to May the 15th, where now you know what decisions to take, what negotiations to make, what ideas to execute, as you have kiboshed the chironic wound in the house of your career and reputation, and you are moving forward with new invigoration and renewal. Remember those brownies dancing in the setting sun at the beginning with a sem Sabian symbol, a portal of new developments in your career. On the weekend, you know, as you move into Friday through Sat Sunday, then we're going to see that Mars conjunct Neptune energy. And that's going to help you, help you clear some kind of confusion around the meaning of life, your spiritual philosophy, foreign short travel opportunities, things to do with book publishing industries, things maybe to do as well with higher education. And if you had some kind of uncertainty there, now we can clear that fog as the weekend emerges. But because the ninth house is a deep house of Dharma and the meaning and purpose of one's life, I could also suggest that ties in with a chironic theme and you'll really clear through new career paths for yourself as mercury moves direct and that are deeply meaningful to your soul hey leo sun moon and rising sign there's nothing like mercury uh, spending a couple months in an elemental fire year in the house of God. That is your ninth house. For some of you, it could have been delays, backtracking, traveling to foreign lands and countries when he was retrograde the first three weeks of May that you've been to before. Some uncertainty, or I mean, some kind of like revision or retraction or change of mind around legal matters, academic settings, connections with father figures, maybe with legal and court matters going back and forth here. Negotiations stalled, return, revise, that kind of thing. But as Mercury goes direct here on Thursday, the 25th, I would suggest that you're going to feel like all things wounded since 2019 in your ninth house are coming to a closure. Chiron has made you feel wounded here since 2019. Is it a wound with a father figure? Is it a wound with foreign travel, higher education, uh, book publishing, court and legal matters. Now you're moving forward. You're le letting the wound go. Now, don't forget the ninth house isn't just foreign land travel, it's foreigners. And with Venus here, maybe a love wound with the, the word foreign land or foreigner has been a part of the narrative as well, that you want to clear through that and move on and make some new decisions. Now, this is a nice turnaround because it flows to you as a fire turnaround. Look for August, September for more it, more conditions connected to this as Mercury will spend a couple months in the house of you this, this summer. Um, then we have the clearing of some confusion here, some kind of fog, you know, around your shared monies with a spouse or spouse-like figure, shared monies with um, banks and mortgages and lenders and, uh, you know, uh, investment portfolios. And that kind of chunky money, shared money, unearned resources is also clearing some confusion or uncertainty as Mars clears the fog of Neptune Friday through Sunday. And some of those shared resources, for example, or issues to do with your investment monies or your uh, banking and loan stuff come to a sh sort of a, um, what do you call it? A, a highlighted moment of clarity. 
especially when it regard when it regards maybe to things to do with home and land and real estate as well because mars rules that part of your chart i might have time to do a separate video for everybody on this next weekend from my port of Vallarta rest pain rest rest and vacay all right um let's talk about this for you guys uh moving on to virgo virgo sun moon and rising so go, I want you to go back to 2019. Chiron began to stab you here, wound you, make you feel icky with regards to money you share with a spouse or partner, money you share, uh, money with investments, stock portfolios, taxes, things to do with loans and mortgages. It's been a tough place. I, my daughter declared to my partner recently, she felt really bad about blowing a small inheritance money she got after 2019 from her grandma. And it's exactly the wound there, right? Having blown some money she received instead of saving or investing it. And so this is a wounded place for some reason, for some of you. Also secrets, betrayals, and shame, sexual infidelities. The darker side of toxic love can be here if it involves that kind of betrayal and secret relationships. And so that has been a wounded area for some of you as well. And now you'll say, be able to say, hey, I'm turning this around. It's a turnaround story because this wound with Mercury's help, especially around May 7th, I'll be doing a video, is and Mercury going direct. You're able to post eclipse, post eclipse, right, of April 8th. And now Mercury's direct here. Make decisions, take actions with um, greater mental clarity and understanding of what has been wrong here so that you can make it right. And this is true from Thursday, the 25th to May 15th, while he is still in this part of the sky. Now you also have that Mars coming through the fog and clearing the fog of Neptune. This is a fog about your primary love relationship the person you're with or a business partnership or how you wish to reach out to your client base. And there's maybe some uncertainty, illusion, confusion, and fog. And Mars is cutting through the fog and you're clear. Now, honestly, if you have a a descendant, ascendant axis, anywhere from 25 to 29 degrees of Virgo, you really feel this clarity about that relationship and ending or beginnings anew because of the clarity you're now experiencing. Libra, sun, moon, and rising sign. This is a sky that tells us you are looking at a lot of woundedness for you in the house of primary love relationship and committed love, maybe legal contracts and matters or how you are able to reach out to an audience in the marketplace. Libra, and this wound can be very heavy for you because it could also mean a wounded partner. Maybe you are fine, but they have difficulties. They've got some wound they are dealing with, some challenges to their health or their, their, their life in general. But whatever this is, this is clearing. You've been feeling this energy since 2019. I know a Libra who went through a horrible wound in this part of the chart uh, to do with love, love relationships. And so literally, you're going to the eclipse of April 8th, Mercury here since, you know, March 10th, now Mercury going direct on the on the chironic wound story, you know, um, this J Jupiter Day, this Thursday. Then this Thursday through to mid-May, you are making decisions about relationship or your partner's making decisions that heal this wound, or you're able to negotiate legal settlements and contracts to heal some wound, maybe to do with court and legal matters as well in your case. But you're able to recover and turn this story around. This is an area where if Mark Mercury turns it around, right, um, as we have Venus, the goddess of love here, I don't know what that means. A, a turnaround story for some of you could be the end of a difficult relationship that's been wounding you or a renewal, regeneration and rejuvenation as the brownies are dancing in the place of the setting sun and the seventh house is the setting place. Um, Mars is clearing some fog to do with health matters and confusion about health matters uh, Friday through Sunday, or confusion and uncertainty about work situations with coworkers, colleagues, and other people like that, or a pet or a rental situation. Any confusion or fog around that kind, those kinds of six house topics are coming to a, a completion, closure, or clearing as a result of this weekend's Friday through Sunday Mars Neptune story. A Scorpio, sun, moon, and rising sign in the sky. What you see happening here is the elemental 
fire mercury going direct on thursday now he's been in your sixth house of work pets tendencies and rentals and health challenges he's been here since 2000 since march of 2000 and this year march of 2024 now he's direct on the 25th after three weeks of retrogradation you may revise things gone back to old jobs or employers rethought your strategy around your health reconsidered pet or rental situations now he's going direct but more importantly he's helping you heal the chironic wound that became active in 2019 wounded around health work pets and tenancy and rental situations perhaps or debt accumulation and being wounded there as well because your credit card or bank debts are high now we want to make decisions take uh you know clear mental clarity directions here around how that is no longer going to be true in a turnaround story of may of april the 25th through to may 15th also here you might consider um, that if you've been negotiating with, with the situation regarding pets or tenancies or rentals this is now where things become uh, resolved or completed or cleared. With Mars moving into Neptune in the house of sexuality, play, fun, and pleasure, entrepreneur, bi entrepreneurial businesses, and creative projects, you may find that you're clearing a creative confusion, a entrepreneurial uncertainty, or a sexual uh, still stagnation, maybe, you know, uh, inertia. And you're getting a little bit of yay you time going on here as you go through this very spiritual, alchemical magic of a Mars-Neptune conjunction that's happening on the weekend, Friday through Sunday. Certainly could be good for some spiritually aligned passion, but let's face it, you got Saturn in your fifth house for another couple of years. You're either serious about having fun or you feel like there's a bit of a burden when it comes to having fun. You could clear some challenges with a child as well if one of your children and you have been having some difficulties or some confusion this could help clear that as well sagittarius sun moon and rising well let's go back to the idea of chironic wound in 2019 that began to plague you about sexuality and romantic love now you may have been trying to heal something here, trying to like repair that, but you also may have felt like this was a difficult place for you. You may also have been wounded here around things to do with your creativity, your creative projects, your entrepreneurial business, or a fundamental wound with one of your children. I know a Sag who had a falling out with a child. I know a female Sag who had a wound with a relationship that was pretty, sexual relationship is pretty hard. So, you know, this is not an easy place for you since 2019. But with the eclipse eclipsing Chiron, the one who brought the wound, and now with Mercury here going direct and talking to Chiron for the third time, by the way, on May 7th, you are now able to have mental clarity, have new ideas, and be able to make decisions or, you know, come up with uh, new communications ideas that move you forward in this part of the sky. Now, like, come on, emails, phone calls, and text messages could be literally coming to you from a child or from a lover that's going to help clear the chironic wound, even discussions with those people that has been here and working through the system since 2019. With the Mars conjunction to the Neptune in the weekend, Friday through Sunday, you're really going to clear some fog about things going on to do with your private life, your home, your home life, where you live and where you want to live. Also things to do with your mother and your childhood. And certainly Neptune here with Mars could clear some confusion about some childhood events or stories that happened uh, that were difficult. And you can have some new healing by clearing that stuff up spiritually and psychologically on the weekend. Alrighty. And some of you may have an opportunity to travel to a dreamy location, sometimes away from home, Friday through um, Monday, because of this travel god, Neptune, and, you know, the energy here would be traveling to a watery place, you know, uh, away from home for some of you on Friday through Sunday. Capricorn, sun, moon, and rising sign. Well, Capricorn, for you guys, Mercury Direct is also helping heal uh, or end that chironic wound in your fourth house. Are you my home? Are you my home? That's the, st the story here. And you have been looking for a home, a true home, a lasting home, a solid home, a belonging home, home and homeland since 2019. And not necessarily feeling it, right? My my one of my, my ex-husband moved to Portugal during this longing for a true home. I'm not sure he feels it. Maybe he does. He's there now. But being being complicated in this part of your life is the idea of one's home. 
And this Chironic wound is also being has been eclipsed on April the 8th. We've had Mercury conjunctions and we have the next one on May the 7th. But when Mercury's trying with Chiron and the eclipse to blast this wound out of the storyline, Mercury now allows you to make decisions though and take actions here. When you were in the retrograde the first three weeks, April 1st to the 25th, you may have gone back over some old ground here, reconsidered or gone back to an old home or planned a trip to an old home or maybe talk to people from your past connected to where it's home, homeland, childhood home. And now Mercury is going direct and you're going to move forward as a result between the 25th of this week through to May 15th. Put you know, your eyeball on May the 7th for some critical communication emails, phone calls that really help you stick the landing on finding this solution to your ennui and challenges regarding the word home or mother relationships mm -hmm, as well. Um, or some woundedness around some money from your family of origin, because you can get legacy wealth in this part of the chart as well from your mom and dad. Now, we have this clearing of a fog with Neptune and Mars, and this is important because, you know, you've been fogged out here in your third house of siblings, short distance travel and skills-based learning and writing. It's been a challenging, maybe foggy, it, because sometimes transcendent and inspirational, but sometimes confusing part of your sky since 2011. That's Neptune's transit here. Now, every second year, Mars is blasting through the fog. And this is kind of like Mars trying to pierce the confusion so that you're, you have clarity. But if you've been confused or uncertain about an online project, a business, a website situation, um, a sibling relationship, aunt, uncle, cousin, niece, or nephew, local neighborhood challenges, neighbors and neighbors, or confusion around a trip or travel opportunities, Maybe even some concerns here about writing projects that can really be sort of cleaned up and the fog can be dispelled. Now, on a very practical note, you know, this can be I'm traveling Mars in the house of travel to Neptune, a seaside shore destination. And that can be true for a lot of you. There's some kind of journey going on, you know, Thursday, Friday through Sunday, that you are on a, on a getaway to do with Neptunian places, which are seasides and seashores and water bodies. And um, but yeah, nonetheless, because it's uh, clearing some confusion, you can clear the, you you can clear confusion with those those siblings and those cousins, aunts, uncles, and those childhood friends. Those are third house people already. Or about some educational direction you want to take, and now certainty can dawn on you uh, during the weekend, or a writing project becomes clarified for you uh, Friday through Sunday. Aquarius, I am one of you, and we have had a chironic wound that has been plaguing us really, really hard. And it's going to be something like you might feel that you have been in a situation, I have been feeling it, where travel has been a wound. <laughs> Talk about it, right? Try being uh, the one of the people who didn't fall for the uh, whole pandemic protocols. So I, I was travel restricted for quite a while, especially for one year here in Canada but also a wound around writing and communicating, especially writing. This is a writing house and I can attest to since 2019, I stopped writing anything meaningful on my blog, The Awakened Dreamer, and I just have really been uh, unable to pull it off. Any kind of writing is like been almost like, pull, what is it? Pulling teeth for me. It's really hard. And I had a dream last night literally about this, you know, so I'm really working with this, where did my writer go, right? I'm a writer before I'm anything else. And um, so where have you been wounded, other other Aquarians here in your third house? It can be a sibling wound. It could be a cousin wound, aunt, uncle, Keith, niece, and nephew wound. Childhood friend wounds, a couple of my childhood, one of my childhood friends passed away. A wound to do with things to do with your ability to uh, take some skills-based education you really want to, or, or, or some wound around some skills-based teaching that you're doing. Possibly in the third house as well, the neighbors, you know, like you don't get, you have, you're wounded, you haven't found your right neighbors or neighborhood situation. All of those have been challenging. Now, Mercury uh, and that eclipse of April 8th are connected to the healing of this problem. And you might find that like April 1st to the 25th, you revised some things. You went back and maybe made some decisions or took, changed your mind. I changed my mind about teaching my sky reader class uh, as Mar Mercury's headed retrograde on April 1st. So it changed your mind about those third house things, changed your direction, revised it, redacted something. Now you're going forward. And now you're going to turn around 
a story with brownies dancing on the setting sun with rejuvenation and renewal. As you now move forward in the area that was difficult and it becomes less so, Mercury is a planet of writing and communicating. For some of you, it's going to be new up levels to your website, your social media presence, your ability to communicate what you want clearly in those venues, your ability to write again if you need to, uh, ability to really take trips and travels effortlessly with no problem and all those kinds of things. Now, let's go over to Let's go over to the Mars Neptune story. Fog around your savings, possessions, earnings, or things that you put in your mouth. You've been trying to clear some confusion, uncertainty, or stasis, or um, stagnation here. Maybe you've been sort of admired in a, a, a fog. Now Mars is piercing Neptune and letting you get clear about that part of your story. If it's about money and earnings and possessions and savings, that's wonderful. You're clearing some kind of confusion. If it's about things you eat, it's certainly with Neptune, he rules addictions, really piercing through that addictive substance pattern habit and making an, or, or gluten that you shouldn't eat and making those decisions to you know, no longer fall under the spell of escapist substances you know, that no longer work for you. And I mean, I, you know, everyone knows that I'm trying to get that wine lover's middle way going. With Neptune, in your second house, by the way, ever since 2011, you might find you're asking yourself, am I smoking too much, drinking too much, eating the wrong foods? You might be really confused about that. And there's a piercing clarity coming through here on Friday through Sunday. And finally, Pisces, sun, moon, and rising sign. This is a great story for you. It is one in which you are able to really uh, get rid of this wound about money that you've been earning, possessions and resources that you've been experiencing ever since 2019 when Chiron entered here. And some of you might have a woundedness about your facial appearance, your teeth, your jaw, you know, feeling you don't look good or even or around the foods that you've been eating and ingesting. But mostly it's about your resources and possessions, and a lot of you are now going to heal this wound. And you may find that this is a time, therefore, if you want to go back to you know March the 10th and then the retrograde, Mercury, and this part of your sky, and then April 1st to the 25th as he was retrograding. Um, the retrogradation would have been going back over uh, this area of your life, really re looking at it to revise it, to make new decisions, to change your mind about foods, earnings, things to do with your appearance. Facially, And then now he's going to move direct on Thursday, the 25th and through to the May 15th, all systems go. That chironic wound here is complete, finito, finished. My sister's a Pisces rising. I can tell you the chironic wounds she's had around the money story are unbelievable since this transit happened. So this is going to pierce that, I mean, end that, clear that up. And Emails, phone calls, and text messages could come through, of course, as Mercury goes direct, that enliven the money that you can make from 10th house activities, like your career and your direction in your career. But just know that this is the beginning of the end. Pay attention to May 7th when Mercury and Chiron do the last conjunction of three. This is I'll be doing a video for that, the beginning of the end of that wound. Now, you might want to pierce the veil of confusion and uncertainty and fog that is you. I mean, let's face it, you've been like floaty doty since 2011 and you have Neptune going through here. Either you're transcendent or enlightened by now, or you're addicted, escapist, confused, mired in illusion and delusion half the time, especially the 25 to 29 degree Pisces, sun, moon, and rising. You've had more of that lately. And now we have Mars piercing through Neptune and clearing something up in a positive way. Are you uncertain or confused about your work, your home, your partner, your life? Anything, doesn't matter. You are coming to some beautiful crystal clarity as the fog is lifted and the defogger allows the windshield of your life to be very clear between, let's say, Thursday and Sunday of this week, but mostly Friday, Saturday, Sunday. All right? So it could be like a new uh, ability to, to, to take action and make decisions to go in a certain direction without any confusion coming up for you on the weekend. All right. Thank you, Pisces, for listening and every other sign. This girl's going off to drop her daughter off to an exam. Then I'm off to Mexico. You won't be hearing from me, but I pre-recorded videos for you. You'll be getting the Venus uh, into the next sign Taurus video, the Mars into Aries video, and a little fun five crazy ass predictions for 2024-25 video. Well, I am basking in the warmth of Mexico. I love Mexico. And I haven't been to Port, Puerto Vallarta since before the pandemic. Are you seriously? <laughs> since 2018, I'm looking forward to it. Thanks, guys. See you soon. Uh, don't forget, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Chiron, um, come join me on Patreon. Get two free courses. 
Harvard Lincoln of Purpose Sinistry, are you my person for being a new member? And you get to keep the courses even if you don't stay. My Patreon community gets this on Sunday, April the 21st.